What is the goal, man? What are you guys trying to do? Our main goal is to import uh, vehicles that are desirable, so like the Defender, mini trucks, uh, Skylines, uh, Supra, stuff that really never came to the U.S. Or if they did, we got like a, like a slow version of it. Uh, just something, we like having fun. That's what we want. Uh, we want toys and we want to connect with other people that have toys as well. You know, it's, it's, it's a community and we want to be part of it too. Armin, I think you're just bringing gifts to the valley, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's basically what you're you're expanding the market. All of these things that we just see on um, on the web and perhaps on magazines. You know, growing up as kids, uh, they just kind of you know spark the imagination sometimes. Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, they look so cool, and this and that. What would it be to own one? And exactly. you you actually you know your your whole plan was to try to bring them in and and uh, perhaps you know try to make these available to the general public yeah well that's the plan uh for example like the defender the u.s version uh, we didn't get it for that many years so they're excessively rare the only other way you can get one and they're so iconic that anybody that knows them just always wanted to see one but never had a chance to see one up close uh, which is why that's one of the reasons why we started with this it's something so unique and so um everybody knows it that when you see it, they're going to be like, whoa, what is that? And hopefully maybe get a buyer or two. But the point is to have something, bring something new and show it off to the world. Walk me through it, man. Yeah, what, yeah. Do we, what do we got here? This is a 1993 Land Rover Defender 90. So 90 uh, is a short wheelbase. There's also a 110. Comes with four doors. It's a lot longer. Uh, this is just a 90. It's right-hand drive because it came from Europe. Europeans, they drive in the right. And it is a five uh, gear. So it's not that hard, honestly. Uh, I drove it for a while. Uh, you get used to it really quick. Um, some other quirks. Uh, anybody would think that they have like the clutch on the right side and the, and the accelerator on the left. No, it's just like us. Uh, right side accelerator, clutch on the left. Uh, the only difference is that on the right, they have the steering wheel, and on the left, you have your stick shift. But it's not that hard, honestly. Um, it's a 200 TDI, so it is a diesel. Uh, you honestly need that power because it is heavy. <laughs> it's basically just bare metal. No plastic in there. This vehicle right here, how difficult was it to, well, first of all, you know, to, to do all the legwork on it, man? It must have been, you know, I mean, it was the first time that you had done this one, or? Sort of. Uh, so we also work as a customs brokerage. Um, uh, we mainly do anything coming into the U.S. we can handle. But lately we've been doing uh, anywhere between 40 to 60 vehicles for other importers. Usually first time importers or dealerships that import vehicles. Uh, we've handled them many, many times. So we're pretty used to the process. It's a pretty lengthy and pretty difficult process, but we're used to it already. We've never done it for ourselves. So we also had to do it for the first time, reaching out to the dealership, uh, exporting it from the country, because we also have a couple of vehicles from Japan. That was interesting as well. Um, but exporting it from the country, getting it to the U.S., uh, dealing with customs and border protection and other government agencies. Uh, and then going all the way to the closest port to the valley is uh, Galveston or Freeport. Uh, that's about five or six hour drive. So that was interesting as well. Um, loading it to the truck and then bring it down. Right now we're still dealing with the title issue, but uh, give us a couple of weeks and we'll, you'll be seeing us on the road every day. That's the plan. Armin, go ahead and take me inside. Uh, let's start with uh, exterior actually. Let's start with exterior. Yeah, so what's, what's interesting about this one is that they put on these uh, windows. They're just slide on windows, pretty common. Uh, gives it a little bit more ventilation because these didn't come with AC until about 97, I want to say, 98. Uh, so getting AC is really hard. And down here, you really want that AC. Uh, so these windows definitely helped. Um, having the, the steering wheel on the right side, it's definitely interesting, but it's not the hardest thing. Uh, I drove it for a while. I got through the gears just fine. Reverse is not that hard. Uh, it's, it's honestly not the hardest thing. Anybody can do it. I see it's got a it's nice patina. Oh yeah. It's, got, it's it's been loved. It's been used. Yes. It's it definitely came from somebody who used it often but didn't abuse it. That was the hard part. Uh, finding a really nice defender that was cared for 
and over there they have like the inspection that we have it's called the MOT this one passed with flying colors every single time so the they're notorious for getting rust this one has minimal to no rust that's the great part so we wanted to start with something that was 10 out of 10 from the start wonderful wonderful okay go ahead and uh tell me about the suspension and the tires are what do we got going there these are bf good wrench all-terrain tires uh we do want to get some newer ones uh just for the next its future owner can have fun from the very start so you can see on the on the back one that one's brand spanking new uh but the front ones are a little bit used because it is a used car it's from 1993 uh so you can't expect too too much but we definitely want to give its future owner something good to start with uh it is four by four and it does have its capabilities uh, even though it's just a 200 tdi it is a diesel uh, it is four by four anything you throw at it sand mud gravel snow it can handle it uh talk to me let's look at the front end here what, everything is original did you yes say? everything is original we did want to change the front grill but i really like the way it looks it looks original looks clean uh we do have the plates in the front uh over there it's not like us where it's just like a little rectangle it's a really really long rectangle in the front uh that's why you see a little bit because we were trying to uh, clean it up yesterday for today's show but uh, they use like uh, some type of uh, sticky goo so it was a little bit hard to take off uh, but we'll keep working on that are you gonna throw those in to whoever buys this thing oh definitely i actually have it with me right now let me see should be oh yeah there you go oh, yeah the, the, Euro, the euro plates yeah it's <laughs> once you see it you're like that's not from here yeah <laughs> uh besides the tires the little snorkel and some lights it does have like a cv radio and a couple of switches for extra lights but besides that untouched so it's perfect for somebody who wants to get something clean and just wants to give it its all and make it their own so that's what we wanted something as original as possible that way somebody else can have fun with it awesome who do you think is going to be the person that's going to want this new somebody who loves this type of community uh off-roading or landing uh somebody that likes sand mud snow uh somebody that wants to have fun that's that's who our market is uh somebody just like us uh, that loves to go and show it off and have pride in what they did hey armin this thing looks <laughs> very very uh primitive oh yeah <laughs> it is it, it's not here to entertain anyone it definitely isn't a lexus no. or, or range rover you know talk to me man because this looks more like a almost like like a tractor you know it does get hot down here i'll tell you that so uh but you it did come with its own luxuries these seats they're original they're not my favorites but they're definitely original they're super comfy super bolster you're it's not gonna hurt coming down anywhere uh you did have a little bit of carpet uh it does get dirty quite fast but not a problem for anybody who doesn't mind it uh in the back it did come with bench seats so if you want to bring your little kiddos you can fit four easily in the back and still have space in the middle for storage uh, it does have its own luxuries it did came with vents that do close and open so when you're cruising down about 50 or 60 miles an hour you just feel that wind coming in ah so fresh any air conditioning from this unfortunately not i believe it was in 97 or 98 that they started coming with ac or at least the option uh anything below that doesn't have ac maybe in europe it's a little bit cooler than down here uh they didn't really need it uh but down here you definitely want that ac nice nice uh lockers Does, have you checked into if it's front lock rear lock or all i know i'm not too much into uh off-roading but i do know there is a diff lock right here uh we haven't tried it since we haven't been off-roading yet uh -huh, uh -huh. once we get the title resolved and we're gonna be putting it on the road we can definitely try it out uh certain parts of europe they do kilometers but where this one came from it's in miles so when you're cruising down the street and you see 60 miles an hour it's 60 miles an hour it's not kilometers you don't have to do the whole transferring you're good to go on u.s roads so this is calibrated to miles yeah yeah uh, miles an hour the speedometer is in miles uh it does have a little boost gauge but everything that has to do with mileage or speed it's in miles 
Sweet. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, check your services, how do they get a hold of you? We will be making a uh, our Facebook public and our Instagram. We're also obviously also taking pictures of down here because we do want to show off the car community that's down here and of course this vehicle. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Exo Cars is our name. Uh, you can reach us directly 956-529-1600. If for whatever reason anybody wants to import something or doesn't know where to start, give us a call. Uh, we're also customs brokers certified and everything we deal with vehicles we do uh, between 20 and 40 vehicles a month so we're definitely very uh, known in this whole importing process okay. and you are the owner of 1991 defender 110 1991 defender 110 yeah. imported Imported from the UK a couple of years ago, original engine. It's a four cylinder turbo diesel with a five speed transmission. Oh, why this vehicle? I've been wanting one for a long time, and I the plan was to buy it, fix it up for overland camping, and drive it down to South America. So it's on my bucket list. Someday I'll get it done. Were you inspired like this fat guy right here by the trophy camel? Yes, definitely. That's why I have this one and the two other Range Rover Classics also. And, and so, I know for me, and I don't own one of these, but that's why my vehicle is, has that in, draws inspiration from those type of vehicles. The sense of adventure, of isolation, and being able to, definitely. you know, to go out in the middle of nowhere. So, tell me about this one, man. You know, what do you know? Tell me a little more more details. What's the history behind this one? Um, imported from the UK. Uh, very little rust issue. Normally the UK is salty, it's humid, so they, they come in with a lot of rust. I looked for one here in the States. They're expensive and they were in worse condition. So I got a great deal on it. Uh, all decked out. The way you see it is the way I got it. Um, locking center diff with the LT230. Uh, the newer ones don't have the lock in it, so that's, that's a big plus. Um, it's slow, but it won't get stuck anywhere. Um, it is a troop cargo one, so I can actually fit nine people the way it's set up right now. Three people at the back, three in the front, two in the front, so seats way in the back. Um, what else? It's got the snorkel. I've actually gone waiting in it up to the middle of the engine, up to my knees of water. If you look inside, it's still full of sand and mud. Yeah, it's so different. So. <laughs> it's not a trailer queen. I, I, I drive it. I, just, I put it in the mud. I got a lot of respect for that because I do the same thing. <laughs> I, I really respect that, man. And driving it, do you, does it feel like you're in an adventure in the All middle? All the time, yeah. And people honking, it turns lots of heads, especially because it's, on, it's a right-hand drive. It's not something I've seen here very often. Um, of course, you can't miss it with the smoke of the, the cloud of blue smoke from the diesel engine in the back. It's, it's, it's fun. It's awesome. Look at that. What do you got there, bro? Some, some little sticks from the boonies, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like you said, man, I mean, it's got patina. It's got character. You know? Uh, did you know about... Uh, you have this one right next to you. Okay? And... How rare is it to be in the Rio Grande Valley and have oh. two of these? It's extremely rare. I've had it for two years. Oh, okay. It's the first time it happens. It's the first time that happens. Uh, I only know about maybe one or two more that are here in the valley. So they're extremely rare. Even for the North American ones that were sold here, you don't see them in the valley. It's not something that people... It's like, oh, I love your Jeep. It's like, no, it's a different animal. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> Jeeps are a dime a dozen. Yeah. No offense, but they're a dime a dozen. I, li I like driving rare cars, things that people don't see. Uh, my Range Rovers are the classic ones, 93, a 93 and a 94. One of them is my daily driver. I can use them and you don't see them very often. I think there's one other guy, Victor, that has a, a Range Rover Classic also that's in the same green color. That's it.
Nobody else drank these pills. I, I, I think Victor decided to stay asleep today. Victor, screw it up, bro. Should have been here. <laughs> hey, so uh, tell me, the type of person that, that owns a vehicle like this, because with the same money, you could probably go get yourself, you know, something that's more, I guess, driver friendly. Oh, yeah. But there is a certain person that chooses this vehicle. I like to do things for myself. So all the work on them, engine, suspension, everything except paint, I do myself. Rebuild the engine, rebuild transmissions, suspensions. I have my own lift at home. Um, this is only one of four or five different project cars that I have that I work on it. Nobody works on these down here in the valley, so you gotta learn, you know. YouTube and Google are my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is the truth. Bro, I'm noticing, are those recovery boards? What, what is those, that on those top? Are, those are sand ladders. Yeah, they're recovery boards for, for when you get stuck in mud and sand and stuff. I have, I have the, the Australian uh, Max tracks, uh -huh. you know, but I've seen the, the, the ones that the trophy trucks used to use back in the day. But I had never seen those right these there. Are, these are actually, they came with the truck. They're waffle boards. I think they're made out of fiberglass. Um, they're light and they're cheap. And I, have, I haven't had to use them, but they're there in case I do. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not the typical content I upload, but I feel like many of you might find this interesting and perhaps even helpful. So if you could have any car imported, what would you bring? Would it be a Toyota Land Cruiser 79 Series, a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, or maybe a rare sports car? Let me know down in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. It really helps a lot. Get up, get out, do something.